get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, RX Bars, Quest Nutrition, many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Our sponsor today is Rise25.com, which helps service professionals, doctors, lawyers, accountants, coaches, anyone who's serving clients one-on-one, stop just trading time for dollars and shift from one-on-one client work to one-to-many. Uh, Go to rise25.com. You could even download a free dream product ladder, which is basically a business plan on one sheet of paper to see gaps in untapped revenue. Companies like Disney, Apple, the sporting industry all have well flushed out product ladders. So today I'm very excited. We have Kara Golden. She's founder of San Francisco-based Hint. Hint products can be found at places that you've heard of, Whole Foods, Starbucks, many more. And it's because they produce one of the leading brands of unsweetened flavored waters. Their products include Hint Water, Hint Fizz, Hint Kick, and even Hint Sunscreen. When I looked at the packaging, Kara, I was like tempted. I'm like spray it in my mouth and taste it. It looks delicious. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Don't do that. No, uh, I'll be tempted. (laughs) Uh, The Hint Water is flavored only with natural fruit without unnecessary additives and sweeteners and to boot, it has zero calories. And since its launch uh, in 2005, Hint has an estimated, been created a $90 million beverage company. That is, it's a private company, so they do not disclose numbers. So who knows if that's accurate because I found it somewhere on the internet. Um, The most impressive feat though, Kara, is you do this all the family and raising four kids. So thank you for joining me. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So from what I understand, you know, your mission behind the company came when you were a Diet Coke addict, drinking six to 10 a day, 45 pounds overweight, acne, you wanted to go to sleep at 3 p.m. because of the energy, lack of energy, and doctors were recommending drugs, other hormone injections, and you knew there was a better way. And so I want you to talk about the first attempts at creating this product. The hint water. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, as you said, I, I really, I woke up, I felt like I woke up one day and had this issue that I didn't know how to solve. And, it, you know, frankly, I'd been, I'd been in the tech industry. I was at AOL and uh, had three young children and I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do next. I, I left uh, AOL after being there for seven years had a great career there, but was really looking at starting my family, wanted to take a couple of years off and figure out, you know, what my next move was. And while I was doing that, like many others, when you're, when you sort of take a break from, from working and you, uh, you know, good grocery shopping, I was shopping at Whole Foods and Trader Joe's and thinking I was doing the right thing. I was starting to run a lot more and, and, uh, and exercise and, one day I looked in the mirror and I thought, um, you know, I'm, I'm significantly uh, have more weight on me than I want to have. I suddenly had developed adult acne. And as you mentioned, I had no energy. Um, it just, I, it three was like, kids, that's not yeah. tolerable too. Well, and yeah. that's the thing that a lot of doctors that I talked to, including my OBGYN was saying, you know, look, you have three kids, you're probably not sleeping well at night. And you know, I just never, these were all things that I felt like I was in this new life that just never was my life. I never had acne, even when I was a teenager, I just, I always had lots of energy. And, and so, you know, I went to a few different doctors who really specialized in, you know, energy, I was, you know, looking at lots of different factors above and beyond the fact that I was a new mother. I, you know, wanted to eat right, but I really couldn't get this weight off. And I thought, you know, I think I'm doing all the right things. And as, as I talked to a couple of different doctors about this, the, you know, kind of the message back was, you should, you should, you know, continue to do what you're doing, drink the diet soda, uh, exercise, um, and, basically take some medication and it will help you change your metabolism, get your hormone levels better. And I thought, okay, well, you know, 
that's great, but what am I doing this for? And, you know, I think back now, if I would have actually been given some sort of diagnosis for what was my problem, I may have actually been that consumer who took the medication. I mean, I, I tell... Probably most people do. Right? I, yeah. I tell many of my friends, you know, that about that, you know, day, and I don't fault the doctor. I don't fault, you know, the medical industry. I really, I, I think consumers share in that because when we go to the doctor, we want the quick fix. We're a society right, that right. really wants to, yeah. you know, be fixed in some way. And that was me. And I, we push and I, that initiative as opposed to trying to find the cause of the, under, you know, the underlying cause, which takes is a long term solution. Exactly. And so I went home from the doctor thinking, okay, I might actually like take the medication, but first I want to like see what I can do in my kitchen to, to, you know, do it first in a like much a more, way, yeah. you know, natural way. So I looked at my diet Coke consumption and thought, okay, I don't even know what I'm drinking. I looked at the label and, you know, I had been drinking anywhere from six to 12 a day of Diet wow. Cokes. And sometimes it wasn't in the can. It was, you know, in the super big gulp size from the local 7-Eleven. I mean, yeah. I was, you know, I was doing whatever I could to sort of get my fix. And I, um, and I really, you know, aspired to drink water. I grew up in Arizona. I really thought, you know, that was, uh, that was what I should be doing. But I thought, you know, somewhere in my mind, I thought, okay, as long as I'm drinking soda, some liquid, there, yeah. there has to be some liquid in there that's doing, <laughs> you know, something for me, right? right. And so, finally, I, uh, I switched from Diet Coke to drinking plain water, and I saw, I felt really different over the next couple of weeks, and not in a good way. I felt terrible. And I really went through, I think, detox without like me actually calling it, which was a withdrawal and a withdrawal from sweeteners. And my body, wow. you know, was really doing, you know, a, a lot. I mean, I like now I think about it and, and uh, you know, I, th I think it's, it's really an addiction. I mean, it's, it's it, and, and I don't think addiction is just caused by sugar. I actually think it's caused by, you know, people being addicted to sweet. And, right. you know, today I, I look at consumers overall and I think we've, we've created consumers who are either addicted to sweet or who are addicted to sodium and or, you know, salty taste. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, I think there's very few people uh, today who are obese because of, you know, either one of those issues, but it's really the people who are, you know, having both of these things are the ones that seem to, you know, have the massive, you know, problem with, with obesity and plus genetics are probably involved in that too. But the average consumer today is, you know, if you throw a cupcake um, or, you know, something sweet down on the table or in a bag of potato chips and you ask people to choose most people, you know, tend to be able to choose pretty quickly. And for yeah. me, it was the sweet. And I wasn't sitting around drinking or sitting around eating, you know, cupcakes or a piece of pie every day. I was drinking Diet Coke. Right. And so I, you know, saw this difference over the next two weeks and not only how I felt, but also how I looked over in two weeks. I lost over 20 pounds in wow. two weeks. And then the acne went away. And all of these changes, my energy was coming back, and I thought, aha, uh -huh, I'm really on to something. And I actually went back to the doctor that I had seen in New York and told him my story. And he was like, well, so, you know, basically, why are you bothering me? I mean, you never took the medication, so why are you here? And I said, well, I just want to tell you I'm really excited <laughs> that I've, like, done this on my own. And, right. you know, and again, it's not, I mean, they have their, uh, the medical industry has their own issues, right? Like, if, if they're not, they're not really paid unless they're sort of a doctor that's not taking insurance to um, spend a whole lot of time really understanding everything yeah. that you're doing. And, and um, so anyway, so I started to, you know, be really excited you about. You started experimenting in the kitchen a little bit. What, what was the first version of Hint Water? So, uh, so basically I you know, was living this way. And after a few months, I, I started taking the fruit 
that was sitting on my counter because I aspired to drink more water yes. and cutting it up and threw yeah. it in. I'm with you and on that. I, so, I don't love drinking water because there's no flavor to it. Yeah. So I, yeah. I, yeah. And so I, um, so it was raspberries. Uh, there were some pomegranates on the counter. There were, you know, just basically any fruit that was on the counter. But so after I cut it up and I threw it in a pitcher and I put it in the refrigerator, it was great for about a day, but then it started to look sort of funky and, you know, a lot of the pulp yeah. and, you know, from a lot of those fruits, it, it just starts to not look, not look cloudy, so great. Right, exactly. exactly. It's not so great. And so I really started at that point to think, I wonder how I can actually create a product that can actually be sold in stores in a bottle that I can go buy with my salad instead of grabbing a bottle of, you know, at that time, vitamin water, which had more sugar in it than a can of Coke, um, or, you know, any of these diet sweetened drinks as well. And I started, I took some fruit one day and I threw it on the stove and I really, and I boiled the water out and boil, boiled the pulp out of the fruit and started putting two to three drops hmm. in a bottle of water. Hmm. And I thought then, you know, the smegginess of, of the water isn't there anymore. Right. And, um, but there were lots of points along the way, I mean, including when I actually then took the product to Whole Foods in San Francisco and got it on the shelf. Yes. I, I realized that um, I actually didn't understand how to create this product in a way that was shelf stable and kind of ready for grocery stores and ready for prime time. Mm -hmm. And um, so the next two years was really spent, um, frankly, frankly, doing the impossible. And I never worked in the beverage industry or food industry, so I had no idea what I was up against. But those first two years were really getting my yeah. MBA in, um, in food production. Sure. What felt, I want to talk about the Whole Foods thing, because that's a great story. But talk, what felt impossible from the journey so far that you were able to overcome? Like people told you, this can't be done, and you've proven them wrong. And I guess people all along your, the journey have called you, I guess, spunky. I guess you would say sweetie, right? sweet. Yeah, I mean, spunky like Steve K. I remember you. Uh, one of their talks, you said you were talking to Steve Case, and he called you spunky because you just you say it how it is, type of thing. Um, so, what is, what have you proven to be possible that people thought was impossible? Well, you know, to the to the average consumer, um, our drink is is just water with some flavor in it, right? It's yeah. actually not easy to produce this product. Right. Um, so people say, why aren't there lots of competitors out there? I mean, it's just, it's a very technically artisan product that is not that easy to produce. And the, the key thing that I saw in entering this market, and frankly, why, why I almost gave up producing it six months into it, was that producing a product that is shelf stable today we have an 18 month shelf life on a product that has no preservatives in it that i was told was impossible to do that you're using people said to me who had worked in the food and beverage industry uh for years said look you are using real fruit and you either need to add a preservative to it or you don't use real fruit because it will go bad right. and so i kept saying what I learned in the tech industry, why? And no one could answer. And so I learned, you know, it's interesting looking industry to industry. Right. When I grew up in the tech industry and I frequently, the thing about the tech industry is, you know, especially in, in the early AOL days, like there, there was never, this is impossible like that word wasn't even part of anyone's dialogue. It was really about, we haven't done enough research on it. Hmm. We haven't brought the right people into the room. We, no one's figured out how to do it, which is very different from it being impossible. Shutting right? it down. Right. right. When I walked into the food, in, into the beverage industry and the, and the food industry, the message was, oh, what you're doing is impossible. And hmm. so when I asked the question why, I, you know, I had come from an industry that was really about like, we don't know everything that we don't know. And one day someone's going to figure it out. In, in many ways, I look at the food and beverage industry and it was like so negative to me that I thought like, wow, you guys are all like, you've all put your own walls up in front of you just because, 
that large soda industry or the large food industry has said like it's impossible. What if it actually is possible, right. but we just don't know how to do it yet? So I think that that was the biggest thing that I really brought into the industry was, you know, it, I think if I would have uh, come from the food and beverage industry, I probably would have had the same mindset. Would I would have taught to, I would have been taught to put the walls up, but because yeah. I came from a different industry, I really thought differently about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. You brought the tech mindset into the food and beverage. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's a really interesting story. Most people, you know, care, make their first sale to their mom or their cousin, Jim, and you make your first sale to Whole Foods, right? So how did you get into Whole Foods originally? So really simple. I mean, after AOL, I, as I mentioned, was trying to get healthy and I went to Whole Foods and I, I really was enjoying grocery shopping, frankly, and spending a lot more time in the aisles and, and being a mom and, and, uh, you know, a parent and, and I was, uh, I was, you know, just really enjoying the experience of Whole Foods. And then one day I asked the guy who was stocking the shelves for a product like Hint and he pointed to this product called vitamin water. And I said, you know, it's really interesting that you say that because we're, it's such a different product. And, and really, you know, what I realized is that I was a diet soda drinker and I aspired to drink water, but there was this whole big space in between going from soda to drinking plain water that I thought was really hard and not that interesting. Right. And I wanted something to help me get there. And he's like, wow, so vitamin water isn't good for me. And I'm like, look, all I'm saying is it has a lot of sweet in, in the product. And if you're somebody like me, who's decided that you know, they really want to move away from sweet, a product like vitamin water is not good for you because it is so sweet. And so I remember the next day going back to Whole Foods saying, uh, or he, he found me in the store and he, uh, and he said, oh, you know, it's so funny. I was telling a friend of mine who had gained all this weight about my conversation with you and he's become a big vitamin water drinker. And he's, said, yeah, I was talking to this lady and she said she's lost all this weight by really cutting out as much sweet as possible from her diet. And um, he's like, I think you're really on to something. Mm. And, you know, this idea about water without sweeteners, no one's doing it. There were a few companies that were doing, um, you know, carbonated waters, but most of the carbonated waters and still today, a lot of the carbonated waters have sodium in them. And so I really wanted something that you know, was just was just the real fruit flavor in it and as well. And that was the other thing that I kept looking at, you know, the flavored waters that were on the market and they all had sweeteners then. They all have sweeteners today. And, you know, somewhere along the way we've moved from being a society of, you know, being a healthy reality and instead most of the stuff is healthy perception. When you really stop to think like, okay, my brain is telling me that this is water, but is this really water? Because water to me is something that is healthy. Today, the stuff with sweeteners and, and too much sodium is actually not so healthy. So, so the guy you know, that I was talking to at Whole Foods was just joking around with me and saying, oh, you should just create this product because it seems like you're really interested in it. And I was like, I should. And then I went home and kept thinking, okay, how do I create it? And then I, you know, created the first batch at home and, and actually delivered it to Whole Foods and, and uh, which I was pregnant actually the day that I was yeah, delivering tell, our tell fourth people, child. Give people a yeah. perspective of what's going on at the time. It's yeah, not like you're so, single in your apartment. You're like, I'm going to do this. There's, there's no. all this stuff going on. So basically I was, I had this idea and the guy at Whole Foods gave me, you know, the, the okay to go and, and create this product in my mind, at least the okay. And then I, uh, I found out I was pregnant and, uh, and I was pretty far along actually and ended up developing the product and my uh, husband at that time was uh, was taking a break and trying to figure out what he was going to do next. He was an intellectual property 
attorney in Silicon Valley and we were redoing a house that he was sort of general contracting on a little bit and, and uh, trying to figure out what he was going to do next. And, and basically I, I came to him and I said, okay, I've got this big idea that I've really been thinking about. I want to start this beverage company, but also I'm pregnant with our fourth. And, um, <laughs> and so there was no question that I wasn't going to do it. It was just basically like, I'm like, oh, by the way, and you know, he I made this announcement to him. It was kind of like, I can't really believe that you're actually, you know, saying that you're pregnant with our fourth, which wasn't planned, and you're launching this company. I mean, that's just so crazy. And so I, I you know, was kind of chuckling, but then uh, he, he said, so, you know, what are you going to do? And I said, well, I took $50,000 out of our bank account and I'm, I bought some, you know, bottles and some closures and, you know, and I'm doing it. And, and he is like very concerned at this point. <laughs> and so he, uh, just so one of those pieces of news care would have made me yeah. very concerned. Yeah. Fourth right. Child company. Now let's it. combine it together. Yeah. Right. And so, so then, you know, he said, let me help you along the way. We went and actually went to a bottling company out in Chicago. And, you know, he, again, like he had a little extra time on his hands. And he, you know, was really interested, too, in, in the fact that, you know, when I described it to friends, I said, it, they were like, wait, you're going from tech. You've got plenty of offers in tech to come and join these teams and, you know, why aren't you going and doing that? Yeah. And I, I just said, look, I think there's a massive problem in the packaged goods industry, which is, which, you know, there, there's the issue of packaging that some have focused on, but there's the actual yeah. in, it, stuff around ingredients that's going into these products that is intercepted, you know, by this other thing, this other industry called health. And at the end of the day, you know, I have three kids already. I have another one on the way. I'm thinking, like, it is so hard to get healthy. It is so hard to feed your family in a way that, you know, I said, even if you shop at Whole Foods or Trader Joe's or any of these, like, Costco, you know, any of these, like, great places, you really have to read labels and really understand what you're doing. And this was 13 years ago. People, I think people actually thought I was lying. Like friends of mine thought I was lying about the Diet Coke. Like they did not it understand. It almost sounds like a conspiracy, right? right. Like, the like they didn't yeah. understand. And, and I think it, it got to a point where, where, you know, people were like, okay, she, she really cares about this, but maybe she should go back to work because she's become obsessed <laughs> with this like topic. And I'm like, I know, you know, eventually maybe I will. But in the meantime, I developed this product. It was um, actually, I thought it was going to be uh, actual, actually developed a week before we put it on the market at, at Whole Foods. And you know, you have to remember that I was the one that had the conversation with the guy at Whole Foods. My husband had not had the conversation with the guy at Whole Foods. He was basically going on what I had told him. Mm -hmm. And so the day that I'm going in for a plan C section, I said to him, okay, we've got the product here. We got it last night. Let's go take it over to Whole Foods. And he was like, well, you can't carry it. Like, you're super pregnant. You're going to deliver in Whole Foods. I'll go with you. And so we get in the car and go to Whole Foods, and he's carrying the case of Hint in. And I see the guy, and I hadn't seen him in a few months. And, and, he, and I said, surprise, I have, you know, this product for you. And, and he's like, wait, what? And I said, remember, I talked to you. And he's like, yeah, no, 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 I totally remember. You were super pregnant. And I'm like, I know I'm delivering this afternoon at two o'clock and uh but before i wanted to come over here and see if you would actually put it on the shelf and he's like wait so you made the product and i said yeah you told me i should go do it and you put it on the shelf and he was like i did 
And I said, yeah. And <laughs> Your husband's so, like sweating profusely. At this point. He is. He's like, wait, so he's thinking, you know, later I find out he's thinking, wait, did he, what did he exactly say to you? And, too late for that. And yeah. it was too late. And so then I gave him the box and I was like, I really appreciate it. And I'll check in in a few days. I'm going to take a few days off to go have a baby, but I'll be back and, a few days. and come yeah. check in with you. I'll and so he called me. Yeah. So he called me the next day in the hospital and my husband answered answered the phone and I asked my husband who's on the phone and he said oh it's the guy at Whole Foods and I said what do you say and he said the product's gone and I said oh let me have the phone and so I said to the guy I get on the phone I said hi I said so who took the product and I still didn't believe that someone actually bought the product but there and and then he said no it's sold the product wow. is sold that's amazing yeah and so there, at that point, I really realized that others were looking for a product like mine. But there were a lot of other things along the way, as I mentioned early on, like the, you know, figuring out how to produce a shelf-stable product. We knew nothing about how to get to market. I mean, I took it in to um, Whole Foods to get them to, you know, put it on the shelf. But in order to actually, you know, have a scalable product, you need to go through distribution companies you can't just like deliver direct i mean it's just not scalable not just because i can't be in you know all all the states but also you just like it's just not the way they want to receive products so there were a lot of things along yeah. the way um but i think a new tradition care should be any new product that comes out you should have someone who's going to deliver in the next three days hand deliver it to that store <laughs> right i know you cannot, you cannot say no one to a pregnant woman, one and two to someone who's about to deliver that day. They, hey, I, just, you know, I tell people all the time, you got to work it, right? Like if you're like, I mean, it was definitely, I think there was a little bit of guilt sitting with the guy oh, as, yeah. I, as this pregnant woman walks up and, you know, her poor husband is behind her, like carrying the case oh, of hand. Gosh. And I didn't, I didn't, you know, intentionally go in was sort of that feeling. I actually wanted to solve the problem for myself. 100%. Yeah. Thinking I want Nothing was going to stand in your way. I mean, it no. didn't matter what state you were in, you're about to have a baby or not. It was just not going to stand in your way. Yeah. But it was, but it's interesting. I mean, you mentioned we launched, you know, sunscreen and, and it was, um, you know, a different story. I wasn't pregnant again with, with, uh, with the sunscreen, but uh, three years ago I had a pre-cancer cell on my nose mm. that I, wow dry patch that um, one day after, you know, it's sitting there for like two years started bleeding and I couldn't get it to stop bleeding and finally went to the dermatologist and talked to my dermatologist who's a friend and said, hey, you know, Kathleen, what's the, what's the deal? And she's like, yeah, it's definitely pre-cancer. You should have it removed. And so I had it removed. And then once it actually, um, my skin came back after developing a scab, I, I, um, saw that it like started again and started to grow again. And I thought, this is crazy. And I went back to her and I said, okay, the only thing I'm doing differently is I'm like wearing sunscreen religiously now since this happened and all of my foundation that I put on also has SPF in it. And, uh, and basically I, um, you know, she said, look, I'm going to do it again, but I think your next stop is the plastic surgeon because this isn't going to be good. And, and, um, and so it really scared me. And That's I went scary. home and yeah. looked at my sunscreens and did exactly what I had been doing for, you know, the last few years with Hint, which was I looked at ingredients and I did some research and found that there was an ingredient in sunscreen and over 90% of sunscreens today called oxybenzone, which is a, um, which is a sunscreen ingredient. It's an active ingredient in sunscreens. It's used to block UV. And uh, basically it was approved by the FDA in 1976, but it was under a great deal of scrutiny back in 1976 prior to being approved because the center for disease control uh, had, 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 uh, done some research on it and found that in some studies, the um, oxybenzone actually enhanced precancer cell growth under wow. the skin to grow. Wow. And so somewhere along the way, it still was approved. And, you know, as, as some of my doctor friends have told me, look, you know, once something's approved by the FDA, 
uh, we consider it approved, yeah. right? We don't yeah. sit there and go back and do research on any of these ingredients. And, you know, today, um, oxybenzone is not approved around the world. It is approved in the U.S., so, and it's a cheap ingredient uh, that's been used. And so, you know, today we have a very increased rate of, sun, of skin cancer in the U.S. in particular versus other parts of the world. And, uh, you know, most people uh, think that it's because uh, ozone layers are, you know, changed or, you know, we use tanning beds more or, you know, what, we don't wear sunscreen. But, you know, what if it was because we've been putting oxybenzone on our skin and basically activating any precancer cells yeah. underneath our skin? And especially when you think about, you know, parents... In addition to the you know, horrible diets, you know, like you said, I mean, the sweetness and, and all that stuff also contributes to, to all that stuff also. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, and so not even tying those things together. What yeah. if you're just trying to do the best job that you can yeah. and, you know, you, you hear, okay, I've got to wear sunscreen. I've got to put sunscreen on my kids. Um, you know, I know with my own kids, when they would go to the beach, it would always like cause a massive fight with my kids, right? Like yes. I'd be chasing them. It was like, you know, the one fight on vacation that was guaranteed. Only one? Was we have over a million. No, I'm just kidding. million, right? <laughs> right? But it was like the one that was 100% predictable oh, yeah, was yeah. over sunscreen, right? And so, and, you know, when you think about sunscreens, at least, you know, the sunscreens that I remember, um, it was really about having any sunscreen to put on. It yeah. was, you know, some were better than other, some were aerosols versus, you know, but it was, it was really, you know, about feeling. It wasn't about smelling. So when I decided to go back to my kitchen and create a sunscreen that didn't have oxybenzone in it, and um, I know when I've taken, you know, employees or friends to our plants to um, experience bottling hint, Everybody says, wow, the smell is amazing. Like when we're bottling grapefruit, you know that we're bottling grapefruit. Yes. And I thought, what if we actually use the essences from our fruit to scent the sunscreen? I, I believe it creates an experience that people will want to wear the sunscreen. And, um, and so, you know, I had no idea sort of what I was going up against. We, um, we worked with a co-packing manufacturer to do this. And because we were, um, they don't know, know what they were up against with you. You're like, I'm just going to do this. Well, I don't care that's if it's the impossible. thing. They're yeah. like, look, we, you know, we do plenty of products that contain oxybenzone. You're kind of the first person that is even bringing this up. And, you know, we hear about parabens all the time, but we, have not, you know, really heard about oxybenzone, but the fact mm. that you're using real fruit in your product, I think you're going to have to go and get FDA approval on this product, mm. not because it, the fruit is an active sunscreen, but because you're creating a new formula, but you're also introducing fruit. And so we ended up getting the FDA approval, but, wow. you know, it's interesting. We may be, I don't have this confirmed, but we may be the first sunscreen company that's actually using real fruit. And, and, it's interesting when I was going through this process, which took almost three years to get the actual approval from wow. the FDA on the product because they had to do shelf testing and, and see sort of what would happen if you used fruit with some of these other ingredients. It's, it's amazing to think that people put things on their skin and put things, you know, in their homes and, yeah. and basically interacts with themselves. And these are the same people that care about what they're putting inside their body. Yeah. Yet they don't really pay attention yeah. to the other things that, you know, they interact with. And a lot of the testing, I'm a big proponent now too, and, and, and I know what sweeteners do to people from my own experience. But I'm a big believer that if you have a large public company you know, like a Coke or a Pepsi, for example, who has who's who are public companies who are doing lots of you know research on different types of sweeteners. Why isn't that information made available to the public? Right. And in the same light, if you're a sunscreen company and you're doing research on different sunscreen ingredients and you're a public company, why isn't that information made available to consumers? Right. Yeah there's a <laughs> yeah i mean it, it goes to the root of, of health really because your skin is very you know i mean it's absorbing things 
uh, very easily. Um, but Kara, I just want to ask two more questions. I know you're, you're very busy and you have a million things going on, but um, there's a lot we won't be able to get to um, because you know, I'm really interested. People should check out, for one, drinkhint.com, and, and there's, many, there's several, you know, many uh, videos and posts that you have about uh, the health benefits and just about the story, and um, they have many uh, great flavors that you can check out on their website, um, and then the sunscreen too. But um, you always go up against just, you go after whatever the hardest thing is. And, um, you know, you knew when you launched um, in New York City, um, it's one of the hardest places to launch in uh, when you launched originally. What, uh, what was the launch like when you originally launched in, in New York? Yeah, so, you know, it was, it, it was interesting. My husband's a New Yorker. And so as I started to see that, uh, that we were getting traction in the San Francisco market. I was getting really excited, um, you know, about our success there in the San Francisco market. And he was, you know, he came on very early on as our chief operating officer, really to, you know, he, he talks now about how, uh, you know, we're married, we work together. A lot of people are like, you know, there aren't very many people that can do that. I, he he speaks very lovingly about how when I had this idea, he thought that there was, you know, no better person to help make this a reality than him. Sure. And and um, and so as he started to become more and more a part of this company and a part of this idea, he said, look, I don't have consumer products experience, but what I can tell you is that I believe if you want to be more than a niche brand, you really need to see what the East Coast says about this company. Mm. And I think that you will, it, while it might be more expensive to go into New York and more competitive, you'll fail faster and if, it, if you actually know if you're going to fail in New York. Because yeah. I, and, and I said, I agree. I lived in New York. I get it. If you can't make it in New York, I don't know if you can make it, that the consumers are very opinionated. They know what they like. And so, so we really, we went into New York very early. I tell entrepreneurs that I wouldn't necessarily um, suggest that. it to yeah. people only it, if, if you want to understand quickly whether or not the idea is going to work. I, I'm one of these people that launches something and wants very fast success. And so, but I also want to know as you back up into it, if it were a failure, I would want to know why it was a failure. And we felt like by launching in New York, we would be able to say, okay, it's worked in San Francisco. It's worked in New York. Now let's go, let's, let's hit the gas and really fill in the rest of the country and really understand what else we're doing here. Because there's, there's different marketing to New Yorkers there's, a, there's just a, a whole different way of doing business than in California. So I think health definitely um, was, you know, people were starting to realize what I was speaking about 13 years ago. Not a lot, but it, it was, um, you know, people more open to the idea of, of health. In New York, it, you know, it, it was, there weren't as many people thinking that what I was talking about was important. Um, and, uh, so, yeah, so we launched it in New York and, you know, with Whole Foods as well. And it was, uh, it was, in, it was you know, basically we, we learned a ton. I mean, it, it, I'll, I'll say this about the New York market, at least as it relates to food and beverage. It's, uh, it's more labor intensive. You, um, it's very competitive. Um, I would say that if there are, you know, a hundred beverages on the market in the Bay Area or Los Angeles. There's mm -hmm. a thousand beverages in New York City, and so it's um, so you have to constantly be monitoring and watching it. And um, and I think it's it's also being at the right events. You know, getting it into the right people's hands, and um, and then you know, and and really having a great tasting product, and then people will follow. But the, the product today, I mean, I, I talk about, you know, products like Red Bull today. I mean, no, Red Bull has been this amazing success over the years, but 
no one I know actually thinks Red Bull tastes great. Right? Like it's like today Red Bull. I don't think Bull, I've ever tried a Red Bull, but yeah, I've heard yeah, the same thing. Yeah. I mean, it just doesn't taste good. Right? And today I don't think that you can launch a product that doesn't taste good. The consumer is very, um, or at least you could have a niche product that doesn't taste good, but you couldn't develop a mass product that doesn't taste good unless it does something for you. Yeah, that remarkable. is very yeah. clear that it does something for you. So I've had, I've said that to people before and they've said, well, what about kombucha? Like a lot of people don't think kombucha tastes very good. And I, and I tell people very openly and shocks people a lot that kombucha is fermented mushrooms, which what is fermentation? It's an alcohol. So you are getting a slight buzz off of the kombucha. And so will people drink stuff that doesn't taste good if you're going to get a buzz? The answer is yes. Right. And that is why kombucha right. works. But beyond that, that is the only product that I know of the last 10 years that has really been able to do it. Kara, last question um, to take it full circle. I mean, the reason you started this company was for, you know, an overall mission of health. Right. And um, what you found was um, chemo patients were, were drinking it. Can you talk a little bit about the feedback from people in that, I, I guess, realm that discovered hint yeah so I, you know I, I always wanted to start this company to you know I, I talked to a lot of people who say oh I, I just like you I wanted to start a beverage company or I want to start a consumer products company and and my mission was and is still today for the consumer so I'm a consumer advocate after leaving AOL and doing some deep diving into what I wanted to do with my life I actually thought about going back to law school and potentially becoming a lobbyist because of all the stuff that I mm. was finding out about, you know, that we had sort of quick approved that probably is not in the best interest of the consumer. And instead I thought if I could deliver a bottle, a $2 bottle of water to people mm. and get them to drink water, I can do a lot more, a lot faster for health than actually being a lobbyist trying to change what the FDA is doing. And so, uh, so that's always been, you know, the mission. And then as it relates to cancer patients and chemo patients, probably a few months after we launched Hint, I heard from a consumer that was, uh, that was going through cancer. And they said, we're so happy we found your product at Whole Foods. Um, I'm going through chemo and it really helps to mask the met metallic tastes that I get in my mm -hmm. mouth. And I didn't have a lot of experience with cancer and, and chemo, um, unfortunately, unfortunately, or fortunately, um, nobody I knew had sort of been through it. And so I, I asked if I could, you know, reach out and talk to them because I was just very curious why Hint and why it was is helping them do that. And so it ends up when you go through chemo, you get a metallic taste in your mouth. And the problem that you have with chemo too, that I had heard was that you know, your stomach, your gastro is, is, is really screwed up. Yeah, it's and so good cells and bad cells. Exactly. Yeah. And so, um, and so the biggest challenge is, is that you want to drink more water, but when you drink more water, plain water actually enhances the metallic taste that mm. you get from this chemo. And so if, in, and instead, if you introduce something that has a lot of sugar in it, chemicals and sugar, and chemicals yeah. in, in it, then it actually makes you nauseous. And so, um, and so, we started hearing this from consumers that wow. they were using it. And then, after a few months uh, or a couple of years after launching Hint, I would continue to hear it. I had a friend who was going through breast cancer, and um, and honestly, like I didn't even think, oh tell her while she's going through this horrible situation, go drink some hints. It's and a little self-serving. Right. right. Yeah. And so she called me and said, you know, I was at, uh, I was at my uh, chemo and there was a woman who was drinking peppermint hints. And I said, oh, you know, a friend of mine actually developed that product. And she said, tell your friend, thank you, because huh. I, you know, I drink tons of this and the mint actually really helps mask the taste. I've since heard from many other cancer patients that it's not just men. It's really based on, you know, 
whatever flavor you you enjoy but um but it really you know goes full circle for us that it's not just about i mean for a lot of people we just help them drink water uh then there's other people who you know reach out to us say hey you're helping me to keep the weight off you're helping me uh not have type 2 diabetes um you're helping me get through cancer you're helping me um to really you know enjoy food and healthy food as a whole i think like that's the biggest thing that we hear from consumers today is that you know if you go to the doctor like i did and you you're trying to lose weight or you're trying to get healthier in some way and you know they say uh you know shed 10 pounds or um stop drinking all that crap or eating all that crap most people walk out of those meetings and go back to doing exactly what they were doing because they think that it's impossible and they don't know how to do it right yeah. hint so often comes up as that first step for consumers to like the number of people who write to me and say what kind of chips should i eat or mm. like what kind of you know what should i look for in my meat or or whatever and and i'm like okay, that, that's crazy because, you know, we're running a beverage company and now a sunscreen company, but, um, but it's, it's hard, right? And so we really get people thinking about ingredients. Yeah. I mean, doctors call you too, probably. A hundred percent. And I think, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a whole other episode, really, because I think that the challenge for so many doctors today is that while they're recommending hint to their patients, um, many endocrinologists as well as oncologists and, and you know, people who are, um, you know, OBGYNs who are trying to help their pregnant patients get off of diet sweeteners, especially while they're pregnant. It's, um, it's, it's a tricky thing because many uh, doctors cannot actually talk about things like diet sweeteners because the... Um, you know, the research is still early and, mm. you know, they don't want to the, say until it's definitive. They don't want to make a statement. Well, and, it. and what's really challenging. I mean, a lot of people say to me like, Hey, I was in the hospital and, and, uh, you know, the stuff on the tray is ridiculous. I'm getting served juice on the tray. I mean, it, it's, it, like I said, it's a whole other episode, but many it's, of it's these many, hospitals, many, episodes. Yeah. many educational institutions, yeah. universities, are sponsored by these large soda companies still today. Yeah. And, you know, and so they don't want to be yeah. the doctor that, you know. You follow that, the trail back to where the Well, they is. can't. They'll yeah. be fired. Yeah. And so, and they don't want to be the professor that is, you know, sitting here talking about, you know, diet sweeteners because there's vending machines that have, you know, Coke and Pepsi in it. And, you know, you think about it too. And again, it's another episode, but it's... But, you know, a lot of people have said to, said to me, like, what is the incentive? It's a sick way to look at it, but what is the incentive for the medical community to actually want healthier products? Because they want people it's, coming it's, to the doctor. Unfortunately, it disincentivizes. Right. Yeah. And, and pharmaceutical companies, I mean, I, I talk about diabetes, but I know that there's pharmaceutical companies that are funding things like going against the soda tax. I'm not saying that the government should have a hand and, and, and that the soda tax should be there at all, but I think it's interesting that it's not the people yeah. that you think are funding these efforts mm. to do away with them, that like a pharmaceutical company, because yeah. they don't want their diabetes drugs to, act, to become obsolete. They yeah. want, they like it the fact that they're selling drugs to control type 2 diabetes. So it, so it's not just the sugar industry. It's not just, you know, the, the Monsantos and, and the obvious, you know, characters out there. I mean, it's really, for us, I mean, we're an advocate for the consumer to yeah. create better health. But, it's, um, but, you know, I just tell consumers yeah. that it's... it's um, you know, it's, it's tricky. So we also, you mentioned uh, drinkhint.com. I mean, in addition to sort of trying to give consumers better information, uh, we also sell products online because it's, uh, while we're in many, many stores, it's also, um, you know, as, as sugar and sweeteners are really becoming, um, you know, really a target for the, uh, sh 
the soda industry, they're doing whatever they can to get more shelf space and they're paying millions and millions of dollars to um, be maintain their share and be relevant. So, right. um, so we have a significant uh, business going online where we ship uh, beverages to Direct and to sunscreen to consumers and you yeah. get on a subscription program as well. So anyway, it's exciting. There needs to be a hint Netflix documentary about this. So I'm just going to put it out there for anyone listening. Um, yeah. On this I love topic. it. Um, I love it. But Kyo, thank you so much. Thanks for your time. Yeah, this is absolutely. amazing. Everyone go to drinkhint.com, check out their products, their information. And you know, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for having this me. This is great. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.